Hello, I'm Eric Waite, and I'm a certified sommelier with the Court of Master Sommeliers, a French wine scholar at the Wine Scholar Guild, and a certified whiskey ambassador. In this video, I'm going to review a whiskey that when I heard about it, when I read about it, um, I became more curious about this whiskey than any other whiskey I have ever heard about. And it is the Glyph Molecular Whiskey. Uh, this whiskey does not come from a distillery, but rather uh, a laboratory uh, in San Francisco. But before we get into this whiskey, uh, here is a short little video clip telling you a little bit more about it. The conventional image of whiskey conjures scenes of bucolic homesteads. A banjo or two, and usually some white guy waxing poetic about heritage. One thing will stay the same. Good drinks, with good stories to be told over them. But a startup in San Francisco called Endless West is trying to change all that. So we're making molecular whiskey, one molecule, one note at a time. By making an aged whiskey called Glyph in a lab in the span of about 24 hours. So we need to understand what makes different types of whiskeys and whiskey itself prototypically itself. So, so essentially in this lab, you're trying to identify what makes up that flavor profile chemically so that you can then learn from it. Exactly. That chemical profile becomes the basis for the whiskey Endless West is creating. Basically, a pinch of this, a dash of that, ethanol. mixed together with medical-grade ethanol. It smells like vodka. Yep. The only reason why any of this ultimately works is because there isn't anything in whiskey that you can't find anywhere else in nature. And so we can extract it from different fruit, plant, vegetable, yeast, uh, wood. Alrighty, let's get into it. So I had um, uncorked this uh, during the live stream but I didn't identify the whiskey, didn't want to prejudice uh, my viewers uh, about the whiskey, didn't want to say too much about it, but I, I wanted to get it beyond uh, the neck pour. So as you can see, I've got it down a little bit uh, beyond the neck, heading towards the middle of it. It's changed only a minuscule amount. I want to say that the neck pour, um, the smell, the aromas, was like you ever go to the hospital and you're gonna give blood or you're gonna get inoculation or something, and they take those little pads and they put some rubbing alcohol on your arm. That's exactly what I got. All I got was just pure, almost like a rubbing alcohol. Some fruit notes do come into it, but they aren't integrated, they're sort of latched on and attached. There is a little bit of minuscule amount of some um, tropical notes with some dried pineapple and with some apple, some pear, a minuscule amount of, uh, I want, it's like a fake honey candy, if that makes any sense. And, and the most minuscule amount of smoke what I don't get is any wood notes. I don't get any vanilla. There does seem to be an attempt to be a spice, but it comes more across as some sort of varnish uh, that you would stain furniture with. There's a little bit of a, a grassiness, and that's about it. The intensity of the aromas uh, is really, 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 really uh, low. Now, I'm gonna say this. The neck pour that I had, I then, um, off camera, put it in ice, tried a number of different ways, and I could not finish it. I had to pour it out. It was completely undrinkable. But my hope is that this will be better, that that was just uh, the weakness of a neck pour, um, if you don't already know this, uh, sometimes what you get in, in the base or below the shoulder in, in a bottle is going to be better than what you get out of the neck. So I don't want to judge any whiskey based on the neck pour. 
But thus far, this isn't that much different than what I previously had. Uh, this has been open for quite some time, um, over an hour, so I've given it plenty of time to open up. But let's try it on the palette. It has improved a minuscule amount. So it has like dried pineapple, apple, pear, some citrus, some lemon, lemon grass, some honey, a little bit of honey. I get a little bit of uh, artificial cinnamon, but the flavors don't seem integrated. They seem very compartmented. There's absolutely zero evolution. Um, there's no development. It's like you get them right up front and then it sort of flat lines uh, through the middle and into the finish. Now, when I heard about this whiskey, the first thing I thought about, and then when I tasted it, the first thing I thought about was uh, an episode of Star Trek Next Generation in which uh, Mr. Scott from the original series has been sort of uh, been reanimated or brought back to life. He was in a suspended animation and he's been brought back to life uh, in the 24th century and he encounters Synthahol uh, in 10 Forward in the bar on um, the Starship uh, Enterprise. Can I help you, sir? Hi, lad. Scotch. Neat. Here you go, sir. Thank you. What in blazes is this? Didn't you order scotch? Laddie, I was drinking scotch a hundred years before you were born, and I can tell you that whatever this is, it is definitely not scotch. I believe I may be of some assistance. Captain Scott is unaware of the existence of synthahol. Synthahol? Yes, sir. It is an alcohol substitute now being served aboard starships. It simulates the appearance, taste, and smell of alcohol, but the intoxicating effects can be easily dismissed. You're not quite, uh, human, are you? No, sir. I am an android. Lieutenant Commander Data. <sighs> Synthetic Scotch, Synthetic Commanders. Scotty's initial uh, impression of that Synthahol whiskey is very similar to my impression of this whiskey. It seems fake, it seems artificial. Um, the, the, and I'm not just saying that because I know how it was made. Uh, I had the highest hope for this. I, I was really, really hoping to see that this would be something they, they would pull off that it would be very close to the real, to, the, to uh, you know, traditional whiskeys and how traditional whiskeys are made because my goal was to then um, put this into sample bottles and send it off to my fellow whiskey friends along with some other whiskeys to see if I could fool them to see if they would think that this was an actual whiskey or that it was qualitatively on par with a lot of real traditional uh, whiskeys whether it's from Japan or Scotland or Ireland. That being said, there's no way in hell, uh, there's no way that any of my uh, fellow whiskey tubers would be fooled by this. I, I just don't, I just don't believe it. So I'm not gonna, now if they wanna try it, I will send it to them um, so they don't have to spend a dime. If they're curious about it, I will send them a, a sample of it. Um, but, but I think there's no way in the world you would be fooled um, by this. Um, it is, it's like a, an automobile in which sort of odd attachments, have, you know, hood ornaments and whatever have been attached to it. It's like, imagine someone who baked a cake and forgot to put sugar in it. So what they did was after the, 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 the cake was baked, they tried to add sugar onto it. it, it it's not integrated. Um, it's very much, it's alcohol with some things stuck to it. That's exactly uh, what this uh, is like. Score-wise, 
you know, this is probably their first effort. A year from now, two years, five years, um, this initial impression of what they're doing um, will be surpassed by what they do in the future. It may be in the future, they produce something of higher quality that if given to me blind, I could be fooled by it. Um, that would be interesting. But for me, I am into everything that surrounds wine and whiskey. The history, the culture, the provenance or terroir, the process of, of making it, uh, the people behind it. I go to um, the wine country, travel all over California, Oregon, uh, well, going to France, um, not just to taste, but to experience everything that is, a, that gives it a sense of place. Same thing for whiskeys, whether I, when I traveled to Kentucky, or when I went to Scotland, or traveled all over uh, California, or at least Northern California, to visit distilleries, is to get a sense of place and how that's reflected in the whiskey. This has zero provenance. Uh, it is just really, really uh, a, a sense of um, artificialness to it. It came out of a, a, a replicator off the Starship uh, Enterprise. Now, um, there are others who may have a different view of this, a different perception of this. Um, I've got a series of challenge coins here, if you've ever seen these. Um, so here's one from Aqua Vitae. I've been collecting these. Uh, Roy over there in Glasgow. Here's one from Scotch Four Dummies in uh, Indianapolis. Uh, here's one from Scotch Test Dummies in Wichita, Kansas. What's really interesting in, in having met these people, um, these, I'm into whiskeys for um, the, the people, the place, and production. And what's interesting, I've met all these people and to get a sense of their perception and engagement with whiskeys is w if you engage with them, you get a sense of their videos and reviews. Um, it's a reflection of them. It's very different than if I were to have, say, an Android or a computer or, or something like that give a, a, a synthetic analysis of a whiskey. Very, very similar to a, a real natural, if you want to call it that, um, uh, whiskey versus something that's very uh, synthetic. Speaking of coins, um, here's mine. This, I have a Mines Metal, if you haven't seen one of these. And if you send me, I have about 50 of these left as of Christmas Day 2018. If you're interested in one of these, send me an email and I'll send you, tell you how to get one of these. I don't have a website yet. And here is another coin. This one's also made out of uh, metal. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. So uh, this is from the Whiskey Vault, Daniel and Rex over at the Whiskey and Vault. Um, and they also have reviewed this. If you're interested in uh, another perception of this, another judgment on this, not just from me, you wanna check them out. And here's their coin. Uh, looks like they've got a couple animals on one side. Looks like, uh, uh, I don't know, looks like, I'm trying to figure out what these are. Uh, looks like maybe a chicken and a hamster. I'm not really sure. And on the back, they have some really, really interesting writing um, written on the back. And if you get the light to shine on it just right, it says, one coin to rule them all, one coin to find them, one coin to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them hmm not really sure what that's all about but anyhow I see you. Uh, so check out uh, their review and you may get a different uh, take on it uh, um, a different perception um, just with as with all these other whiskey tubers get different perceptions of various whiskeys watch multiple reviews um, of, of, of a particular whiskey rather than just listen to one particular person. Uh, I highly recommend uh, checking them out. All right, uh, that's it for uh, this review. Um, what would I give them a score? I'm gonna have to go below 70 points. I'm gonna give this a 65. This is the lowest score I've ever given to any uh, whiskey. I do not recommend uh, buying it unless you're just curious. That's about it. 
All right, if you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, if you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you were subscribed. Give it a thumbs up and share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.